of interested in what's happening in South Africa and I listen to the news from time to time just to find out what's happening. And so I heard about you being downgraded to junk status in terms of your financial borrowings. And um, <clears throat> so when I came here, I, I expected to see something completely different, but as I drive around, I'm just amazed at the pace of development, and uh, I see the affluence, and I'm saying to Errol, what's going on? Because you guys have been downgraded to junk status, you know? But it's really wonderful to see the, the development and all that's going on here uh, in South Africa. I want to welcome Pastor Rousseau. Uh, we got to know Pastor Rousseau just before we left South Africa, so it's wonderful to see you here uh, tonight. Um, some years ago, my wife and I, we made the decision to go oil-free in our cooking. Um, oil-free doesn't really mean uh, that we are totally oil-free. Um, and I think I try to be more radical than my wife, because, but she's the one who's in the kitchen. Um, but um, we, we, we try to use a minimum amount of oil in our cooking. And I just want to uh, share uh, this video with you from Dr. Esselton. Uh, Dr. Esselton uh, has been a pioneer in the reversing of heart disease. Uh, and um, he, uh, I think you, you want to listen to what uh, he says. Uh, this, this video is about five minutes long, so I, I thought I would just share that with you this evening. Thanks, Richard. Thank you, Mr. Mental Fish. It was true you all may have heard about this. No oil, fish, fowl, meat, or dairy. No oil! No oil! <laughs> Let's just take a moment here because some people still are not clear about the fact no oil! <laughs> why? Why? Because the data. So, olive oil is terribly seductive. Scott Gunner Gundy did some studies that are very short term that showed that it increases your good cholesterol, lowers your bad cholesterol, improves your ratio. It got a huge amount of press. Doctors heard about it, and therefore it must be wonderful, right? Wrong. Because you look at longer term studies, Blankenhorn, right, in the California. Two groups of patients, one saturated fat, the other monounsaturated like olive oil. The, Baseline angiogram at the end of the year, the angiogram disease of coronary disease had progressed just as much in each group. <laughs> Lawrence Riddell on the research triangle took the African green monkey, some similar lipid metabolism to man, saturated, unsaturated, five years. In the monounsaturated olive oil group, higher HDL, lower LDL, better ratio, autopsy, just as much coronary disease. The oil companies didn't like that, so Lawrence Riddell repeated the study with rodents, and the result, the same. Dr. Vogel has gone on and shown us indeed that olive oil activates clotting factor 7 just as much as butter. And Vogel, in a separate study, and Ong, in a separate study, have shown how it impairs flow-mediated dilatation that I just talked to you about, the brachial artery test. And last month, in the journal, uh, the journal of the, uh, the, uh, the National Cancer Institute, uh, olive oil, along with meat and dairy, is implicated in uh, at risk factor for uh, breast cancer. Well, that wasn't quite enough because I do get the Harvard Heart Letter. And I have great respect for Thomas Lee, who's the editor. But one of those heart letters said, for heart patients, be sure you use the heart healthy oils. Canola oil, olive oil. So I wrote to Dr. Lee. So do, dear Dr. Lee, I have, I have always had the highest regard for your Harvard Heart uh, letter, but I was puzzled and skeptical by your recommendation for oils for patients with heart disease. And I impose for your review uh, these six articles and references that I'm aware of that <clears throat> suggest that this is not a good idea, and I also enclose for you a copy of my study. 
And six months later, <clears throat> I got a letter back from Dr. Lee, dear Dr. Esselstyn, thank you for your reprints and your study. Uh, I would agree with you that as we move forward in this most complex of diseases, that we should remain flexible. <laughs> no oil. <laughs> Um, I thought I would just share that uh, with you um, so that um, as you think about uh, the use of oil and what you want to do with it, just be very careful um, in how uh, you use oil. You may choose uh, not to totally eradicate it from your diet. But He's a, a heart specialist and uh, he knows what he's talking about. He does all the, the, um, the research and also is having to deal with the patient. So uh, please give that some thought. Um, this evening I want to talk to you about death in the pot additives in our foods. Uh, we have already prayed so uh, let's just go uh, right into it. Um, then the, the, the Bible says, Then one went out into the field to gather herbs and found a wild vine and gathered from it in his lap full of wild gourds and came and sliced them into the pot of stew for that they, they did not know what they were. So they poured it out for the man to eat. And as they were eating off the stew, they cried out and said, O oh, man of God, there is death in the pot. And they were un able to eat. Second Kings chapter three, chapter 4 verses 39 and 40. Um, we need to be very, very careful uh, about uh, the things that we're eating, the things that we're putting in the bo in, into our bodies. Uh, and uh, in today's world, death in the pot tastes very nice. <laughs> you know, and so we're not crying out uh, we're not crying out, we're just um, uh, loading it up. Um, the Apostle Paul reminds us, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. So we've always, uh, food additives have always uh, been around for centuries to enhance the uh, appearance and flavor of food and to prolong the shelf life. And last night uh, we talked about the fact that uh, in tin foods all the enzymes have been re removed in order to prolong uh, the life uh, of the substance that's within uh, that tin. But do the food additives really add any value uh, to your food. How do we know what food additives is in that tin of soup or the tin of baked beans? Uh, we've talked about the fact that uh, that tin of tomato looks so red, you know, and we know that it's dye, you know, it's dyed red, it's not uh, as red uh, as they make out, especially if you make, a tin, if you make tomato soup at home, uh, you know that uh, it's not that red. Um, so what if someone were to tell you uh, that a chemical added to your food could cause brain damage in your children uh, and that this chemical could affect how your children's nervous system formed during the development so that in later years uh, they may have learning or emotional dif difficulties? Uh, what if there is scientific evidence that these chemicals could damage a critical part of the brain known to control hormones so that later in life your child might have endocrine problems. Suppose evidence was presented to strongly suggest that the artificial sweetener in your diet soft drink may cause brain tumors to develop and could cause the same brain lesions as MSG. What if it could be demonstrated that all of these types of chemicals could possibly aggravate or even precipitate many of the neurodegenerative diseases such as Parkinson's disease, Huntington's disease, ALS, and Alzheimer's disease? Would you be concerned? Um, would you be upset to learn that these additives have no other purpose than to enhance the taste of food simply to boost cells. So says Dr. Russell Blaylock. 
Um, if you want to know, uh, uh, Dr. Russell Blaylock is a very famous American ne neurosurgeon. If you go to YouTube, uh, you will find him uh, there. And there is a book that he's written, Exo Excitotoxins, uh, The Taste That Kills. Excitotoxins are substances, usually amino acids, that stimulate taste receptors on the tongue. Not preservatives and with no nutritional value, excitotoxins are nothing other than chemicals added to foods to make them tastier. Can you believe that? Um, so this is from uh, Dr. Kathy uh, Lippmann, founder of the Lippmann Center for Optimal Health. Amino acids um, are used in every cell of your body. We need amino acids to build the proteins that will allow us to survive. All organisms need some proteins, whether they are used in muscle or simple structures in the cell membrane. We all need amino acids. But glutamate is an important neurotransmitter. It allows neurons to communicate between each other. Glutamate is responsible for opening calcium channel in the neuron so that calcium can move into the cell. This results in a number of important chemical reactions which stimulate connected neurons. But if glutamate levels become even slightly excessive, the calcium channels in some cells get stuck open, leading to the destruction of those cells and adjacent brain cells. So aspartame, uh, aspartame uh, is a sweetener that's in uh, the drink, the drinks that we, that we use, and uh, it's uh, categorized as E951, more popularly known as NutraSweet and Equal. It's found in foods labeled diet or sugar-free. Don't put your hand up if you use diet or sugar-free products. Um, aspartame is, <laughs> is believed to be carcinogenic and accounts for more reports of adverse reactions than all other foods and food additives combined. Aspartame is not your friend. One of the products of these chemical reactions results in the production of free radicals, one in particular, hydroxyl, which left unchecked can kill brain cells and fortunately, the free radicals are absorbed by antioxidant vitamins such as vitamin C, E, and beta carotene. Again, uh, as I was saying um, this evening, we're, uh, an, on a daily basis, we're taking in a lot of toxins. And later on this week, I'll talk to you about the reason why uh, we need to have a detox from time to time. You know, it's so essential because our bodies are toxic uh, because of the uh, chemicals uh, that we're taking in. Aspartame is a neurotoxin and carcinogen known to erode intelligence and affect short-term memory. I don't know, I was, um, you know, when I was growing up as a child, I did not see the amount of Alzheimer's and dementia that I'm seeing today. And uh, the, the, there's just more and more chemicals that are going into our foods that is affecting our brain function. The components of this toxic sweetener may lead to a wide variety of ailments, including brain tumors, dis diseases like lymphoma, diabetes, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, fi um, fibromyalgia, and chronic fatigue emotional disorders like depression and uh, anxiety attacks, dizziness, headaches, nausea, mental confusions, migraines, and seizures. Just last year, we were um, at the health center and uh, a, a lady came there and she was suffering from fibromyalgia that's all over her body, is aching, she has headaches, there are days when she doesn't want to get out of bed and she cannot could not trace the source, doesn't know what's going on, and invariably it comes back to some of the things, the chemicals that we're putting into our bodies, and we don't really know that we're doing it. You know, because these things are being sold to us, and we think that they're good for us, and um, unless somebody brings about an awareness, then we continue to 
take these things in not realizing and then when disease follows uh, we think that it's just uh, a natural, natural consequence or the body breaking down but there is a cause there's always a cause today virtually all of the neurodegenerative diseases are now considered to be intimately related to the excitotoxic process seizures, headaches, strokes, brain injury and developmental brain disorders are intimately related to excitotoxins. And this is Dr. Russell Blaylock speaking. You know, so here is a neurosurgeon uh, who's at the coalface, who knows what he's talking about. If, you, if you're interested, you can get that book, Excitotoxins. I have bought the book, I have it myself. And uh, you may be interested just in looking for that. Um, monos, monosodium, monosodium glutamate, um, and uh, I will show you some things. I went looking in your supermarkets for this product and, and found it in abundance. Um, MSG is an amino acid used as a flavor enhancer in soups, salad dressings, chips, frozen entrees, and many restaurant foods. MSG is known as an excitotoxin, uh, a substance which overexcites cells to the point of damage or cell death. All right. MSG affects the neurological pathways of the brain and disengages the arm full function, which explains the eff effects of weight gain. So there is a hormone in the body called leptin, uh, when you have eaten, uh, the hormone leptin will tell you, I'm full, I'm satisfied. Uh, there is the hormone ghrelin, and the ghrelin will tell, tells you, I'm hungry, I need to eat something. But the MSG uh, disengages the uh, leptin hormone, uh, and so uh, you'll, you, you, you buy something, uh, I don't know if it's a Big Mac or whatever it is, uh, and you say, well, uh, because the leptin is disengaged, you say, I'll have another, or, or you go in and you say, um, supersize them. You know, I know none of you do that, but I'm just telling, <laughs> telling you about what some of the folks do in England, right? Um, MSG is the reason what we talked about, uh, it says that it's a taste and answer. So what happens with the uh, false uh, meats that we have? How do you get the beef flavor? How do you get the chicken flavor? Or whatever flavor it is, it has to be uh, the MSGs, which is giving it uh, those kind of uh, tastes, uh, those flavors. So that's why you're being said, told, do not go for these products. You're better off eating meat than the false meats, okay? Um, so uh, the, the, the MSGs are in these, so uh, I hope I'm not taking it away anybody's um, favorite food here. Okay, so let's just have a look. How do you identify, how do you identify products that uh, contain MSGs? All right, so these are some of the, th some, these are some of the terms that uh, will tell you uh, whether a product has uh, MSGs in it, uh, hydrolyzed vegetable protein, hydrolyzed protein, hydrolyzed protein extract, sodium casemate, calcium casemate, yeast extract. So you will look at that and you say something will have yeast extract and you think that's okay. It isn't really. Um, textured protein um, and textured protein is, is, uh, is the frozen vegetable, vegetarian products that we, that we use, yeah? Okay, so that's why we're saying these things are not uh, good uh, to be eaten. So, uh, autolyzed yeast, gelatin, glutamate, hydrolyzed protein, monosodium, monopack potassium uh, glutamate, and so on. So, all of these things you need to be very uh, uh, aware of, careful of. Um, and if it says flavor and flavors, flavor and enhancing or seasonings, that's another term that you, be, you need to be looking out for because uh, seasoning is just a broad term to cover a multitude of sins, okay? Um, so just be, uh, be aware of these things. If you, if you use soy sauce, you know, after we, after we discovered all of these things, we went, back to, we went back to England and we went to the health shop to look for the alternative. You know, so um, we, we, we buy bullion or you, you have these uh, stock cubes. And so we went into the health 
health shop to look for them and discovered that they weren't so healthy after all. You know, so um, we have to go back to the old ways now. We just use the natural herbs and we use onion and garlic. These are wonderful things that God gave to us. Uh, there are many things that you can use. And, and you know, when, when we were growing up, uh, back in the day, we weren't using these stock things, my brother, were we? You know, we would, we would go out and we were just using uh, things from, uh, the, the, from the fields. That's what we were using. Yes, Rowena? Are there some soy sauce that's okay? Okay, so that, the other thing is that uh, you do need to look for, uh, just make sure you read the labels. Make sure you read the labels so that you, uh, you, you can identify the product that you're going to uh, be buying and, in, and ensure that uh, it's safe to use. Common ingredients, uh, items containing excitotoxins, uh, bullion. Uh, I don't know if you have this product here, do you? Okay. Uh, the Noor stock cubes, uh, the Bisto, Bisto gravy. Um, uh, and then, you know, so I told you that I went looking in your stores um, and I thought that I'd need to help you. Um, and, and the thing that I found that was quite surprising uh, here in South Africa, it clearly stated MSG on, on, when you look on the ingredients uh, column, uh, MSG is very clearly listed there. Um, when I looked at this one, I didn't see it. I thought this, this, this looked pretty okay. Just make sure that you read uh, the label to make sure that it's a product that uh, is safe to use. This has MSG, uh, you know, so or th these things, um, they, you just need to think about uh, the way in which you're going to uh, do your cooking, um, uh, you know, if you want to avoid these toxic products uh, that, uh, and, and what we're saying is that these things are dismantling brain function, even though uh, you may not know it. And what, what one, of, one of the things that I've said uh, this week is that we need to be banking good health now so that when, the, when, when we reach old age, we can draw down on what we have banked. You know, it is not inevitable that because you're, you're old and you've retired that you, you now, uh, you know, you walk and with a bent back and you're limping and you walk around miserable and so on. That was not God's uh, plan for any of us. So persons who should avoid excess free glutamate, instead of reading through this list, I'm just going to say all of us. <laughs> all, all right. But let me, let me just uh, say I was amazed. I went into, we went into Woolworth, and I, of all the places that we've been to, I was uh, just uh, amazed at how forward-looking uh, uh, Woolworth were, and my wife pointed this out to me, and I, I had to take a picture uh, it says here, the first one, we have taken 29.3 million teaspoons of sugar out of our food by the end of 2016. You know, that's, that, that, that's Woolworth uh, being forward-thinking and proactive. Uh, by the end of 2016, we will have taken another 1.9 tons of salt out of our food. In the UK right now, there is a drive, uh, because there's a lot of uh, hidden sugars uh, in the foods that we eat, so in the, like in the tins of beans that you're buying and all these tin stuff, uh, there are a lot of sugars. And, and so uh, to see Woolworth uh, being very proactive and saying this is what uh, we're doing in order to enhance your health, uh, I do take my hat off to them. We don't use uh, the sweeteners, aspartame, saccharin, and uh, gly glycomate uh, in our food, and we never will. I thought that was amazing, <laughs> you know. So um, they, they, they're very forward uh, thinking, forward planning. Uh, it may cost you a little more, uh, but it may be worthwhile uh, looking at what these guys are doing. Uh, there are no added preservatives in our yogurt ever. The other thing I should say is that before, I, we, before we, as we were walking out the shop, we saw that sign, but 
I went to the spice rack in, uh, in Woolworths and I was looking uh, for material to criticize and I have to say I was very unsuccessful. You know, I couldn't find uh, much of Woolworths product with MSGs. So they, they, they lived up to uh, their products. But one of the things we've said to you, avoid processed foods. Okay, uh, avoid uh, processed foods. Um, and y y the, back in the day, uh, our parents, you know, I grew up in Jamaica and uh, there weren't any supermarkets for us to walk down and buy these stuff. And we went out the back, we grew our thyme, we grew our tomatoes, uh, uh, and so on. And we had all these things. And the feast food was very, very tasty. You know, so you don't need uh, the, the stock cubes and, and so on uh, in order to make uh, a, a very tasty meal. Um, we've, we, we've, um, I can't. Anyway, go to Woolworths and see it for yourself. <laughs> okay, um, trans fats, what are they? Um, Artificial trans fats, sometimes called industrial, uh, industrially produced trans fat, are produced when vegetable oils are hydrogenated. So that's your margarine as one, one example, heated to a very high level, and then it becomes a solid, a chemical process that hardens vegetable oils and turns them into solid or semi-solid fat. So if you're eating, let's say, uh, chips or fries from uh, a fast food place, then that's uh, being done in trans fats. Okay? Um, so there are currently no legal requirements for food manufacturers to label trans fats. This means that you need to check ingredients for hydrogenated fats or hydrogenated vegetable oils. So it makes sense to just read the labels. Anything that is hydrogenated, then you ought to avoid. Um, uh, but I will come back to the fact that I keep saying uh, try to move away from processed foods. No processed foods. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, mo mo most of the major brands of peanut butter contain partially hydrogenated oils, uh, which we recommend that you avoid. So if you are buying peanut butter in the store, uh, then there's a lot of trans fats uh, in that. Uh, if you go to YouTube, you can make your own peanut butter. Folk, let, let, let me say something to you. Um, one of the things that we, we've discovered is this. People will say, we've got no time. We, 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 we're just too busy. Uh, we, have got, we can't do all of these things. We've just got no time because we're living in a, uh, a fast-paced world. I'm driven by the clock and so on. But we've discovered that when you get sick, you've got a lot of time. You know, people, when, when you get sick, people have got a lot of time to do the juicing and, uh, and, and buying all the green stuff and uh, going to the various doctors and so on. Uh, but, you know, the time needs to be spent before you get sick, just making sure that uh, you live a healthy life and avoid getting to that place where uh, you have some form of degenerative uh, illness. Partially hydrogenated oils are solid at room temperature, so the peanut butter manufacturers use them to keep the oil from separating and to give their products a very long shelf life. So what we've said uh, this week, uh, naturally, if you were to make the peanut butter at home yourself, it would have a few days shelf life because of the enzymes that are in there and, and so on. But when it's manufactured, it can be on the shelf for up to a year or longer and it stays fresh uh, because of all that preservatives that's in there helping to preserve your body when you eat them. Um, if you think it's important to avoid trans fats as we do, you will read the list of ingredients and in every processed food you buy and put back any that includes the word partially hydrogenated or hydrogenated uh, by Dr. Merkin, drmerkin.com. So uh, let's talk about what's in our drinks. Um, meet Zane Meldir. Uh, Zane suffers from long-standing digestion problems uh, after becoming addicted to fizzy drinks. She was drinking up to three liters of Coke, Fanta, or Sprite a day. Up to three liters of Coke or Sprite 
a, a day. She said, I'd been having pain in my stomach for a long time and was occasionally being sick. About a year ago, I was rushed to hospital with severe cramps. Doctors did, te did tests that confirmed that I had ulceration of the stomach lining, a condition my doctor put down to my addiction to fizzy drinks, which effectively damaged my stomach. Did Zane give it up? She said, I now take pills to aid my digestion and to soothe the ulcers. I still have the ulcerated stomach, yet I can't stop drinking fizzy drinks. Okay? Shame. You know, so, so, so one of the things that, um, one of the things that we've, we've said this week is that there was no fizzy in the garden. <laughs> you know, uh, all there was was water, and water is the best drink that you can have for optimal health. You should be drinking at least uh, eight glasses of water per day uh, for uh, optimal health. And then uh, Roy Christian drank up to six liters of Lucozade and Diet Coke per day, resulting in him reaching 20 stone. Errol, what's that in, uh, in kgs? Um, How much? It's times 6.5, two sixes of 12. So it's uh, over 120, 130 uh, kgs. Yeah? Um, so what's that, Lachey? How much? 127. 127, you know. So um, this resulted in him having a pulmonary, pulmonary embolism and the heart rate of a 60-year-old. Now, I'm quite offended by the 60-year-old because that's my age. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know why they should pick on a 60-year-old. But anyway, um, these are the things that we really ought to be uh, avoiding. Not only are fizzy drinks packed full of sugar, uh, contributing to the obesity epidemic and rotting our teeth, but they're also being linked to a whole host of health issues. Okay, so uh, if you're really serious about your health, uh, thinking about uh, the, uh, the, the excitotoxins that's going into your body, thinking about what it's doing to your brain, uh, think about what it's doing to your body, then we really do need to avoid these things. And you cannot go wrong with the things that God made for us to eat. Okay? Um, ingredients found in rust remover and cement are found in some brands. And additives used to be, uh, have been linked to kidney and liver problems and even DNA damage. So, uh, folk, let's think very carefully uh, about the things. And when you, when you reach for that fizzy drink, and I, as I said to you on Sabbath, I have traversed, in, 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 in England at least, uh, my uh, responsibility as the president of the conference was uh, going around the, the churches and uh, they would feed me so I know what's in the dining rooms and they, you know, nobody can tell me that uh, they, aren't, they aren't drinking these things because I saw them. You know, uh, I, I can't say that about South Africa, but my guess is they're in your fridges. Um, so we need to fix up. It, it, it's time. It's time. That's, that, that's our thing. Okay, so do you buy orange juice at the store? If you do, I'm sure you're careful to buy the kind that's 100% juice and not made from concentrate, right? Uh, after all, that's the healthier kind, the more natural kind, the kind without any additives, the kind that's sold in the refrigerator section, so it must be almost as good as freshly squeezed orange juice. And you can even feel the sediments in your mouth. It has to be real. Haven't you ever wondered why every glass of pure premium orange juice tastes the same, no matter where in the world you buy it or what time of the year you're drinking it? Have you ever noticed, if you're making orange juice at home, that uh, one batch of orange will taste different to another batch of orange because they're coming from different trees and some will be a little sweeter, some will be a little uh, bitter. But when you buy it in the box, uh, and I'm not going to say uh, any brand like Tropicana, you know, but, uh, you know, but when you buy it, it always tastes the same, no matter what time of the year uh, it is. The reason for your store-bought orange juice is so consistently flavorful 
has more to do with chemistry than nature. Making orange juice should be pretty simple. Pick some oranges, squeeze them, put the juice in a carton, and voila. But actually, there is an important stage between, uh, be between that, that's an open secret in the orange juice industry. After the oranges are squeezed, the juice is stored in a giant holding tank, and critically, the oxygen is removed from them that essentially allows the liquid to keep for up to a year. So you can understand uh, these guys are out to make money and they're producing the orange juice in volumes and they've got to, it's got to when, when, it's, when it's juice, it's got to be stored somewhere. Uh, that is the processing, yeah? That's the processing that's taking place. And uh, in order for it not to spoil... You know, uh, if, we, if we make orange juice at home and we leave it for a couple of days, you will, begin to, you will notice that it's beginning to go off, all right? Uh, but these guys have got to keep it. They've got to make sure that it gets to the store uh, uh, without spoiling. So that liquid that we think of as orange juice tastes nothing like the orange juice that comes out of the carton. Um, it is quite flavorless, so all the oxygen has been removed from it. It's not, not drinkable. Uh, so the industry uses flavor packs to reflavor the deoxygenated orange juice. Uh, when the juice is stripped of oxygen, it is also stripped of flavor providing chemicals. Juice companies therefore hire flavor and fragrance companies, the same ones that formulate perfumes for Dior and Calvin Klein, to engineer flavor packs to add back the juice to make it taste fresh and package it for you. Okay, um, flavor packs aren't listed as an ingredient on the label because technically they are derived from orange essence and oil Yet those in the industry will tell you that the flavor packs, whether made from, for reconstituted or pasteurized orange juice, resembles nothing found in nature. Avoid processed foods. No processed foods. <laughs> okay? The packs added to juice earmarked for the North American market tend to contain high amounts of ethyl but butyrate, a chemical in the fragrance of fresh squeezed orange juice that juice companies have discovered Amer Americans flavor. So they will use another chemical for the South African market. They'll use another chemical for the British market uh, according to our palates. Okay, so that's how uh, the, these things are made. Uh, so, and, and of course, because they're doing it in the, doing it in the volumes, uh, then it has to be done that way. So many of the modern diseases that, and allergies that we experience today can be traced to the foods that we are consuming. The more processed foods that you consume, the greater the risk. It makes sense, beloved, for us to take time just to prepare our foods. It may mean that you might spend another 10 minutes extra in the kitchen, but in the long run, it will be worth it. Uh, the Apostle John says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health. Aim to consume as much raw food as possible using natural ingredients rather than processed, uh, which contain MSGs and other harmful additives. Okay, so I'm going to stop here uh, for tonight. Um, if you have any questions, we'll do those questions now. Um, ran over a little last night, but if you have any questions, uh, we will we'll do deal with those now.